I'm pretty sure it was my last video that I showed my new preamp that I'm building as part of a control box um, that will take the output from my computer and route it to the various amplifiers that I've got going on. And uh, the preamp is, is um, this board right here. And I, I showed this in my last video, but it's not the same one. I actually rebuilt the board to correct the problem I talked about in that video. And the main reason why I did this, like rebuilt the board, wasn't to fix that problem. It was to fix the spacing. I had these ones spaced a bit too far apart. It was taking up too much space. Since then, I also made this thing right here, which is the power supply, first of all. And it also has two other op amps on here that control the base shaker. They're the filter for the base shaker, these two op amps right here. And this one is uh, kind of a preamp for, the, uh, for both of these and also the output to the Hafler circuit. So I also made a bunch of mistakes on this one that I'll quickly turn over and show you the wires on the back here. This one I'm not gonna change, this is too big. And I'll tell you how that came about. This started out as just the power supply with a transformer on here, a small board mounted transformer. You can see the space I have for it here. And uh, so I, I, I designed that and I had the switch out here and a fuse on here. And I said, you know, you're wasting a lot of real estate there because it has to be a certain width. Okay. And I wanted to get these pots over closer to the power switch. I didn't want to have too much of a gap. So I said, why don't you put this other stuff on here? And when I did, um, having the transformer on here induced too much noise on the circuit. So I took the transformer off, made it remote in a, um, in a, like a wall warp type form. You plug it in and the wires plug into this or tie into this and that reduced the noise substantially. <laughs> so I wound up, um, doing all this rework on the back here, but not a big deal. It still works the same way, except it's got a lot less. And you know what? The noise that I was getting there really wasn't that big a deal, but it's just for the sake of saying, okay, I can do this better. So there's this and there's this. I got a couple other things that I need to make an output uh, board for the back that I'll have more of these jacks on here. And then I can build the case for it. But in the meantime, I um, after rebuilding this, I tested it again to see how it's performing. And the first plot that you're looking at here is the frequency response with the tone controls turned all the way up, like treble and bass, and all the way down as well. And you can see that I kept the range of adjustment fairly conservative at 6 dB boost and cut for both the bass and the treble. Now this switch that you see right here defeats the tone and the treble, and that's that center uh, trace that you see on my plot. Now that's the frequency response for the tone controls. I also ran some other measurements to test the noise and the distortion to see how they look. So the first thing I did, and that's what you're looking at here, is I loop back the sound card to get a baseline. And I know that looks terrible, but that's with the laptop plugged in and not running on battery. This next one that you see here is with it running on battery. And you can see that that's a lot cleaner and the noise floor is way down there. The next plot that I'm showing you now is with the preamp switched in and the tone controls turned off. And the only noticeable difference there is the peak at 60 Hertz is a little bit stronger and that's coming from my power supply and that's to be expected, but it's still way down. This next plot is with the tone controls turned all the way up to the maximum six decibel boost on the bass and the treble. And the noise floor went up slightly, but nothing that is going to be audible. And this next plot is with the tone controls turned all the way down. So a cut of 6 dB on the bass and the treble. So I'm very satisfied with how this is working. Low noise, low distortion, at least lower than I can measure with my setup. And I'm using a fairly good audio interface. Next step 
is to start putting these things together. Like I said, this is um, uh, one board and I reduced the width of this one so that it would leave a gap in between. The gap that I'll have in between will be a selector. I've got a, a three pole switch or a three position switch, whatever it is, that will go in between. That'll be input selector for one of three inputs. Now I don't have three inputs, but you know, I wanted to future proof this so that I wouldn't be building something that I have to rebuild again in the future. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not rebuilding this board. I swear I'm not. So yeah, this is going to be oriented like this with the space in between these two boards and this, the, the selector switch, the rotary selector switch will be in between. Uh, space the same distance as this one uh, is from this one, two inches. And um, that'll be it for the front panel. Uh, the power switch, uh, this is the shaker level, the ba uh, base shaker that's in my, my seat. This is, will be the Haffler circuit at the back of the room to, to control the level of that. This is the volume control, oh no, balance control, volume, treble, uh, switch to turn off the tone controls and the bass. So yeah, range straight across the front of the, of the uh, unit. And then, like I say, I've got another circuit board to make for the back that will have more of these uh, jacks on here so that it will have, I think, six of these, all for inputs and outputs, right? And also, um, the other two boards that will go in here will be the filters that I have, well, currently have in my big 10 channel amp for the subwoofers. They'll also be in here and they'll tap into the output board that I have. So that there'll be a jack on the back for that. That'll plug into my subwoofer amplifier. Okay. So more on this coming up.